Good morning, everyone. Good morning to those out on the web. Uh, good morning to you. Welcome to Cleddie Community Church Apostolic Centre. Um, we're back to some kind of normality at this moment uh, after the loss of our Queen and the, and, uh, the morning time we took. But we're back. Uh, just a quick notice is um, Tuesday, prayer meeting here Tuesday night. And uh, we also have home group is coming, is back. All the activities really will, will be back. So on Thursday it's going to be it's going to be at Bonnie's, okay? It's 7 o'clock at Bonnie's. Um, right, I, I just want to speak to you about, before we go into anything, I want to speak to you about something that's really been on my heart, and particularly over the last week. You, we know that we, we, are, we are in a battle. We are in a big-time battle. You've got to be aware of this. And we need to be with each other. We need to link spiritually with one another. Find out how each other is. Because the enemy is definitely riding out for those that want to move for God. Now, sometimes it's really hard to figure out spiritually what God is doing. But what we can do, which is physical, is have a look what the enemy is doing on earth. And that will give you some idea of what's happening in the spiritual. Now we know that over, we've been supporting Ukraine with prayer, and we still do. As you know, that there has been threats coming from Russia towards Ukraine and the West as well. They are threats. Now, I want to bring it back to this. In Genesis, it talks about how, uh, in Genesis 3, it says that he, he will crush his head, but he will strike his heel. Yes? And it's about the enemy, how he strikes the heel. And what he's trying to do, right, is he's trying to stop things moving. And that's what it's like on the natural, on the earth. And what it is for us, spiritually, is that he's striking the heel. He could grab us by the arm. He could take us round the neck. But it's not. He grabs us by the heel. Because it's to stop your walk. It's to stop you dead in your tracks, walking with God and walking in your ministry. Now he strikes the heel. What is it? It's the Achilles heel. And Goich and I were talking this morning, and he mentioned something. And I remember that many, many years ago, when they had prisoners, rather than put shackles around their legs to stop them walking, they would actually cut the Achilles tendon. Eventually it would heal, but it would stop them walking. So they couldn't run away. They cut the Achilles tendon. Now, the fact is that it would heal. Now, at the end of the day, even though the enemy is trying to strike us by the heel, stop us walking, the, God is going to crush his head. Meaningful that he is going to win anyway. But, but in the meantime, it's very difficult to walk when somebody is striking you by the heel. Now, we have, each of us, have an Achilles heel in our lives. We have something that the enemy grabs hold of and tries to stop your walk. Eventually, God will come through. But let me tell you, the battle wears you down sometimes. You know, you can be battling. I mean, even in the natural, during the wars, those that were on the front line, they were relieved after a while. So we, are, we know that we are battle-weary. And I feel that way at this moment. Now, I'm saying about the Achilles heel. I just want to say this. Adam, when Adam, when God made Adam, the enemy was already on the earth. You agree? Amen? He was already there. We don't know how long he was there before Adam was made. 
But we know this, that Adam walked with God and the enemy could not touch him. He was obviously there, and let's just say, for the sake of the story, he might have passed by in front of the enemy many times, but he couldn't touch him because he walked so close to God. And then, who came? The woman came about. Now, the woman came about, not by God in the dust like he made Adam, but he, she came out of Adam. She was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Now, I want to tell you this. 99 times out of 100, your Achilles heel will be something to do with bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. The enemy will try and get at your children or your siblings, whatever it is. But the closer you are, the enemy wants to strike. Now, that's been happening to me for quite some time now with one of my daughters. And she was in Morrison this week. She had to go into Morrison for uh, some checks before an operation on her leg. Well, anyway, on, was it Tuesday, Ness? I've lost track, Tuesday. On Tuesday night, late Tuesday night, my, my other daughter got a phone call from the hospital. Could the family go up? that Louise was losing it and they wasn't sure whether she was going to last the night or not. They couldn't rouse her. Well, we couldn't get up there that quickly. So we had a, a call, a family call. So I went around, picked the family up and as we were coming home, the doctor phoned and I pulled into a lay-by and she started to tell us that things were not good and that, unfortunately, things could go either way overnight. So I said to my other daughter, I said, we're going up now. So we went home, got in the car, this is about midnight, and off we went uh, to Morrison. And when we got there, they took us straight in to where my daughter was. The reason I'm telling you this, I'm telling you now about crushing the enemy's head. So when we got there, they took us into the cubicle and uh, she was really not good. Uh, in a coma, things were, her body was starting to shut down. And they had, you could tell by what they were saying that they were giving up hope. So this is what happened. I was telling Bonnie the other day, listen, this church lives on miracles. We live on miracles in this place. This is the only place where we know he is for us. No matter how much the battle is, no matter how much he grabs our heel like he grabbed my daughter to get at me, the enemy is going to be crushed. He's not going to win. Because although I'm battle weary, we're still going on. Anyway, this is what happened. So we get into the cubicle and she was there, shallow breathing, in a coma, and the nurse tried to rouse her. Louise, 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 nothing. And I walked in and I said, Louise, she woke up just like that. And she looked at me, she said, what are you doing here, Dad? I said, you're not well. She said, I know. She said, I know I had sepsis. I've got sepsis, I know that. And the nurse could not believe it. She just woke up. Now that's a miracle. Right? That is a miracle. And the miracles are going on all the time. When I am a part of a bowling team at the Milford Bowls. One of the guys there, his wife has got cancer. And we've been praying for her for nearly 12 months now. And he said to me the other day, Roy, he said, tell Vanessa, keep on praying. It's working. She's getting better. Amen. Right? And another lady there who is not well, she's got a lump on her thyroid. It's not an overactive thing, but it's a lump there. She came up to me. She said, will you pray for me? I said, we'll put that on there. We're praying for her as well. What am I trying to say? Stick together, guys. Remember, we've all got an Achilles heel. I don't care what it is. 
that the enemy wants to strike to stop you walking. But God will crush his head without a shadow of a doubt. We just got to hang on there until he does that final thing. And I thank God what he did. But it is, it does take its toll. And I want to tell you this. And Tendai last week said about the leadership. We are not immune from battles just because we're in leadership. Just because you think we're capable. I'm telling you, we suffer just like you do. So you need to keep on praying for us deeply so that we can have some respite from this battle. But I thank God that he is with us and it is working. And there are other people here who are having battles big time. But I want to reassure you, he cannot hang on to your heel. Because let me tell you, what he's forgot in the physical is this. That if he grabs one heel, you've still got another foot that you can crush his head with. Amen? So I just wanted to let you know what's been happening. Not been easy, but God is good and he's coming through all the time. Keep on praying for Louise because now she's got cellulitis. But they're treating that, thank God. So there we are. Hang on. Miracles are happening every day. And this church expects miracles. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And uh, we have a good, we're going to have 10 days speaking to us today. So I know it's going to be good. So everybody, just sit back. God has come. God is here. And we're going to sit in front of him today and thank him for everything. And as Shumi goes away to Zimbabwe, she's going and she's going to come back. And when she comes back, She'll come back better than she ever was when she went. Because there's a future for you. Amen? So wonderful. Okay, thank you. Whew. Over to you, Faith. Oh, sorry, forgot. Next week. It's, I can't pronounce this. On Saturday at 2 p.m. here till 5.30, we have a guest speaker. Uh, God did say how to pronounce it, but it's Satoko. Satoko? Satoko. Uh, she's going to be speaking on dreams and interpretation of dreams. She's going to be teaching in the afternoon, Saturday, and then in the evening at 7 p.m., right, she's going to be speaking about whales, really. Okay? So it'll be really good. It's hosted. We're hosting it on behalf of the third place. Lawrence re is really the host. So we're just letting him use this facility. But it would be good for you to be here. Amen? I know it's a lot of people like to, uh, to, to see about these dreams and stuff like that. So it would be good. And she is a well-known speaker. she has been on God TV and all. So uh, that would be good. Okay. Over to you. Faith. Last. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Lovely to see your smiley faces. Um, I was about to say, the first line of what I was about to say is this is very much a personal thing, but actually I don't think it is. Um, it's been a really tricky week. I've had a really tricky week. And as we've heard from Roy, he's also had a tricky week. And I know of others in the church that have had really difficult weeks. And probably because I've been a bit overtired, I felt a bit overwhelmed and very teary. <laughs> so if I start crying this morning, just ignore it. Um, but last night I was singing a song to myself. Uh, which the words say, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope and strong deliverer, the <coughs> everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary, you're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. And it's taken from Isaiah 40, a fantastic piece of scripture, which I just love. And verses 28 on to the end say, do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You know, this week in church we've seen answers to prayer our God is a faithful God 
we just need to place our trust in him and he's the God of promises we know that he promises to never leave or forsake us you know um, he promises that, that those who hope in him will renew their strength not just enough to just get by but to soar and to run and to walk without getting tired he has he gives us the ability to achieve the things he has for us we have a faithful God who gives us the strength to get through all the things that we need to get through as long as we put our place our hope in him let's praise and worship him <laughs>
back to my school days where, you know, sports day, you know, you're playing a game and everybody would pick a team. I was always the last one to get picked. Always. And it's like, oh, okay. But you know what? God always picks me first. He picks me first. He picks you first. He picks you first every single time. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. And he is for you always. no question that God is definitely for you it's because it's because my God is for me no no who can be against me 
It's not, there's no question of it. He's for you. There is no question. It's not if he is for you. Because your God is for you, no one can be against you.
Good morning. Amen. Let's just start off by thanking God, uh, all of us, uh, for the testimonies that we had this morning. Amen. In your own words, just thank God. Amen. Father, we thank you for what you're doing amongst us. We give you honor. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you even for the great things that you have in store for each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we see the great exploits, Father, which you have done even in this church. In Jesus' mighty name, we appreciate you. We give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy 28. Then we'll also read from Luke 23. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. It says, And your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be iron. Let me read it again. And your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be bronze, shall be iron. Amen. Then Luke 23, verse 37. It says, and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also which was written over in, in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we have received the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. Amen. I want to talk about open heavens this morning. Amen. 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 Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We pray that you are anointed this morning in the name of Jesus. May the Spirit of God brood upon it, even as we share it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. 
in the book of Deuteronomy, we, we found that uh, the, the heavens can be brassy and the earth can be iron. Amen. So, in that part of the Bible, there were a list of cases that were being pronounced. And one of the cases was heavens that were brassy. But uh, in Luke chapter 23, when Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible says the curtain that separated the holy place and the most holy place was torn into two. Amen. And it says that the earth around that place it was dark on the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Amen. Okay. The Hebrew clock it starts from the their first hour is our six o'clock. So when they talk of the first hour, it's six a.m. 6 a.m., second hours, 7 a.m., going downwards. So now, when the earth became dark, it was around midday. It was around midday, between two, sorry, between midday and three. All the three hours, it was just dark. So it was something really spectacular that took place. Amen. So, the curtain that separated the holy place and the most holy place was torn into two. And the system of worship, it starts from the tabernacle of Moses, where it had three segments. Three segments, which is the courtyard, the holy place, and then the holy of holies. And the same thing came also with the the Temple of Solomon, it also had three segments. But there was one temple that just deviated from that guideline, which was the Tent of David. It did not have all those segments. One day maybe we'll talk about the Tent of David. Amen. So now, the three segments, in the courtyard, there were two articles, which is the altar of bronze and the brazen lava, L-A-V-E-R. And then in the holy place, there was the table of shewbread, the golden candlestick, and the altar of incense. So when the priest entered the temple or the tabernacle, he would come carrying a sacrifice. The first place that the priest would go to was the altar of, of bronze. And he puts the sacrifice. Amazingly, when the priest put the sacrifice on the altar, there will be a supernatural fire that will descend from, from heaven and light up the sacrifice. Amen? Amen. It happened daily. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. It happened daily that the priest will bring a sacrifice, put it on the altar, and then a supernatural fire consumes the sacrifice. Then, after he has done that, he goes to the present lava. The present lava was filled with water. The priest would then wash himself. He would wash his feet before he goes into the holy of holies. Sorry, into the holy place. So every day, every day, you will go to the courtyard, do the same thing, and then go into the holy place. It, it was only once a year that he would then go to the holy of holies. Only once a year, during the feast of the day of atonement. Amen? That's when he goes into the holy of holies. I'm trying to explain why the curtain was rent and what it meant. Amen. So in the holy place, the priest would come in the morning 
and in the evening to go and check the incense that was on the altar. And you would also check the state of the bread, the condition of the bread on the table of shoe bread. On the table of shoe bread, there will be 12 loaves of bread which represented each tribe of of the, of, of the children of Israel. Amen? And then when they were still, he would remove them. And the priest was also permitted to, 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 to eat the, the bread that was on the table of shewbread. So when he entered into the holy place, the table of shewbread was on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, there was the a golden candlestick, which had seven candles on it which represented the sevenfold spirit of God in Isaiah chapter 11. Amen? And then the furthest article in the holy place was the altar of incense. Then he just removes the incense or he adds some more in incense on it. And that altar of incense was the last article just before the veil, which is also known as the curtain. Amen? So, what am I trying to say? In the courtyard, that place was lit by the sun. It was lit by the sun. In the, gold, in the holy place, that place was lit by the golden candlestick. But in the holy of holies, that place was lit by the Shekinah glory. A supernatural light. So now in the Holy of Holies, there were two articles, which was the Ark of the Covenant. And on the Ark of the Covenant, there were two cherubim that were facing each other. Between the cherubim, there was a small article called the Mercy Seat. And the Shekinah glory shone right above the Mercy Seat. That was a supernatural light. Amen. So now when Christ hung on the cross and the curtain was torn, it symbolized open heavens. Amen. Yes. Why? In the Bible, the word heavens is in plural 146 times in the New King James, which shows that there are more than one heaven. Amen? Yes. According to Paul, Paul talks, I think it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where he talks about the third heaven. Third heaven. So, there is the first heaven, the second heaven, even though the Bible does not mention. There is no way in the Bible where you will find written second heaven or first heaven. You will not find it. But there is somewhere in the Bible which is written third heaven and also heaven of heavens. There is a place called heaven of heavens. So there are three dimensions <laughs> or three segments of heaven, just like the courtyard. The courtyard, like I said, in the courtyard, there is the, the sun lit the place, isn't it? The sun. So the first heaven, it is where we see the sun. Yeah. The sun, the clouds, and the blue color that we see there. Yeah. That is the first heaven. Then the second heaven, it is a place that we see in the book of uh, Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. When Daniel sought the face of God, and he was fasting for 21 days, the Bible says God released an angel with an answer to Daniel. But when the angel came to a certain point, there was the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia is not a human being. It is a demonic principality. So where these demonic principalities are situated, it is the second heaven. Amen? Yeah. Then in the book of Daniel, it says that the angel that had been assigned by God to go and give Daniel an answer could not proceed because that angel was overpowered. Then that angel had to return to heaven 
to look for reinforcements. Amen. When he went to heaven, got there and he found Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, in heaven, there were three archangels, according to the Bible. Other writings mention more, more archangels. But if we are to stick to the Bible, it is to be, it's a place of safety. Amen. There are three archangels. In the Bible, I would say there is Gabriel. Gabriel, who was like the minister of information. Every time when God wants us to release something important, he would release Gabriel. Gabriel will carry that message. Amen? And then there is also Lucifer before he fell. Lucifer. I think Lucifer was the minister of, uh, of art. <laughs> Amen? Because it is said in the book of Ezekiel that he had pipes that released music. Amen? And he became proud and God chucked him out of heaven. Amen. Removed him and chased him away with some of those supporters of his. That... <laughs> Amen. And then there is Michael, who is the minister of defense. If there is something... So the Bible says that angel went there and brought Michael. Michael, when Michael came, they were now able to overpower the prince of Asia. And Daniel received his answer. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that in this season we are going to experience the supernatural of God where we are able to access the third heaven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God is taking the church to a place of glory. When we talk of the third heavens, third heaven, we are talking of the glory of God. I respect the anointing. I appreciate the anointing. But now when we talk of the glory of God, we are talking of something at a higher level. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. May God clothe us with his glory in this time, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, let me just talk about the brassy heavens. When we talk of the brassy heavens, it is when there is extreme hardship that anyone who anticipates solutions and interventions from God, they are not able to, to get the, their, their solutions. It means that the heavens are brassy. It's not all the times that when we pray, we receive answers immediately. Sometimes we go through that phase. Yeah. Amen? Where our answers do not come as we expect. Then the second thing, it is when the heavens are brassy, it means that there is no productivity. Which means that our effort does not match, sorry, our results do not match the effort. Sometimes we do certain things, but still, we do so much and we, see not, we don't see much. Amen? Then, thirdly, brassy heavens were a sign of a curse. But we are now free from the curse of the law. Because Christ became a curse that we be delivered from any curse. Amen. But there are certain experiences that we go through as believers that look like we are going through brassy heavens. Amen. God <laughs> will rarely use us until we experience the, that little bit of brassy heavens which we may call a wilderness. The Bible mentions in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and in Luke chapter 4 that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. You know, when you look at it, it has, it's not so logical. Because the Holy Spirit must... <laughs> we would want to think that the Holy Spirit must not lead us into a wilderness. He must deliver us from a wilderness. But the Bible says he was led into the wilderness. Yeah. Amen. When God appoints, he trains. Amen. Amen. When God has appointed someone, we will go through some bit of training. And these are some of the extreme, extremely difficult conditions that we experience where we obtain our training. Yeah. Amen. 
From that training, we know how to believe God. We learn to be patient. We learn also to be considerate. Amen? A man or a woman, for, when we talk about ministering, if they have not really gone through a wilderness, they will be very judgmental and lack understanding of what people are going through. Amen. You need to understand lack so that you can feel for somebody who is lacking. Amen. So these are extreme conditions that God allows for us so that we can be sharper in what God has ordained for us. So that we can have more depth in what God has ordained for us. So that we can be more effective for what God has ordained for our lives. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So please do not circumvent the dealings of God if the Spirit of God is leading you to a wilderness. Be patient. <laughs> it is for our own good. All things work together for good to those that are called according to the purpose of God. And when Jesus came out of the wilderness, power was evident. There is no power without any disruption of your life. Our lives have to be disrupted somehow. Abraham, his life had to be disrupted at the age of 75. Leave your people. Just imagine, leave your people at the age of 75. You are already established at 75. You don't want to, to be moving at that age. But God says, move. And when he became, uh, and when he obeyed what God was saying, when he allowed the disruption to take place, he became father of all nations. Yeah. Father of all nations. In other words, there was expansion that came. Amen? The life of Joseph was disrupted when he was sold as a slave. He was his father's favorite son. He was sold as a slave, went to Egypt, as a slave. And later on, he goes into prison and for something that he had not, he had done nothing wrong. He's put in prison and he comes out of prison, became prime minister of Egypt. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because he allowed disruption. Sometimes there can be a disruption that can happen in our lives. Amen. Sometimes it, it can come in the form of a sudden lake that you can't explain. You have not been misusing your own resources. But suddenly you find you are struggling. God allows that disruption so that we can, we can learn something. Amen. 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 <laughs> I've slept on the floor myself. We sprung in. We have slept on the floor. It's a funny story. <laughs> One time we came from Sunday service. The service went very well. We were so happy. So happy. And we, you know sometimes after ministering, you're very tired. Yeah. And when you sleep, you really, you really go light off, really. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? So in the middle of, of the night, I think it was around 1 a.m., we heard a sound, boom, you know? And, you know, I jumped half naked. Went to the windows, you know, I thought somebody, there was a burglar attempting to break into the house. Went to the kitchen and the rest of the house to check if there's anyone that has come into the house. Returned into the house, into the bedroom, and found that the bed had broken. It was the bed. That <laughs> <laughs> the bed was broken and it couldn't be repaired. I think... I think for two months, yeah, it was around two months, we slept on the floor. Oh. And on Sunday, still preach like nothing happened. <laughs> like what Roy was saying. That sometimes you can share the word of God and no one knows what you're going through as a, as a preacher or as a leader. Amen? Sometimes, some of those things, you know, they make us like, uh, stronger. yeah, stronger. God breaks us so that we can be stronger. He breaks us so that we can be stronger. Amen. Amen. Okay. Different kinds of open heavens. There is what we call localized open heavens. 
This can be open heavens for a nation. Open heavens for a town. We pray that the heavens above our town be open in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 These can be open heavens for families. For families. That your family experiences, your family and mine, I want to include myself as well. <laughs> your family and mine experience open heavens. Amen. Amen. There is a man in the Bible called Obed Edom. Let me just look at the reference. Obed Edom. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 11. When David became king of Israel, he immediately made sure that he brings the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And when the Ark of the Covenant was being brought to Jerusalem, it, it was put in a, an ark, sorry, it was put in a, in a cart that was drawn by oxen. Then there is a man that saw the ark inside the cart almost falling to the ground. He touched it to make it, to make sure that it doesn't fall. He touched it. And God struck him. God killed him just for touching the ark. David was very angry with God. He was angry. And he said, this man was trying to, uh, you know, God, God being God, he just does what he feels like. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you can't argue with God <laughs> and succeed. <laughs> Amen. But then somehow the ark found its place into the house of a man called Obed Edom. The Bible says, when the Ark of the Covenant was in the house of Obed Edom, for three months, his house prospered. Amen? In other words, they were having localized open heavens yes. as a family. Yes. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, you and I can experience open heavens as a family, yes. as individual families. Amen? Amen? May it be our portion in this season in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen? Amen. Then open heavens for maybe what I can call individuals. The Shunammite. Every time the prophet came into town, she created room for the prophet Elisha. And then Elisha looked around and said, this lady has been very good to us. Every time we come into the, the, the town, she accommodates, accommodates us. What can be, he was asking his servant, what can be done for this woman? And the servant said, this woman has got no child and this husband is old. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That was a loaded statement. Amen. The woman has got no child, but his husband is old, which means that there was no way they can have a child. Amen. Then Elisha stood and said to the woman, by this time next year, you shall have a son. And then that word was fulfilled and she had a son. Amen. What the woman did, she created room for Elisha. Friends, we need to create a room for God that we can experience open heavens as individuals. Create room. We create the capacity to receive from God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, open your mouth wide that I may fill you. God wants us to open our spiritual mouth wide that he may fill us. It is possible that we can be filled until rivers of living waters gush out of our bellies. Amen. May God give us the revelation to open ourselves to receive from God. Sometimes God really wants to touch our lives. Sometimes God wants to increase yeah. the power that operates in us. But we need to open ourselves yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Revelation to open. How we can open ourselves for God to touch our lives. Amen. Then there are two dimensions of open heavens. There is Partially opened heavens, which means that the heavens are not fully opened. We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. 
It says, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those. He says the word of the Lord was rare in those days. It was a very sad time, friends. It means the prophetic revelation was rare. Was rare. There was no, it was there, but it was rare. Amen. It's not a good thing when the prophetic is not operating. It is the cry of my, of, of my heart that we have an endless flow of the prophetic anointing. Amen. A prophetic anointing that flows like a river. Yes. Amen. 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 That one person comes and the, prof- the other one comes, the other one, yeah, yes. and the church is edified. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It means we have open heavens. Yeah. Yes, sure. Paul says, desire ye spiritual gifts, especially to prophesy. So when he's saying desire, yes, God gives gifts. But the fact that he mentions that we should desire, it means it's something that we can pray about. It's something that we can ask God for. Amen. Amen. Mm. So, the prophetic was very rare in that time. Then there is what is called open heavens. When the heavens are fully open, fully open. It says in the Bible that God opens windows of heaven to pour out a blessing. Windows, plural. Blessing, singular. Just imagine what kind of blessing it will be if God, if, if it should be a big blessing if windows are going to be opened. Amen? Amen. It means we are operating under open heavens, ladies and gentlemen. Amen? So, may God open the heavens for us that we can see such a dimension operating for us. Okay, I want to talk about uh, this from the text that we read. Maybe we just covered two or three points from there. The benefits for open heavens. Okay. Number one, Open heavens enable us to tap into the mode of divine acceleration. To tap into the mode of divine acceleration. In Matthew 27, verse 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land and unto the ninth hour. From the sixth to the ninth hour there was darkness. Amen. In other words, God actually like violated the laws of time when Christ hung on the cross. He violated the laws of time. Amen? So may the laws of time be violated for us to expand or to enlarge our lives. Amen? Usually, for things to happen, we have to go through processes. I respect process. Amen? But there are some times where we need (laughs) God to move now. (laughs) Amen? There was a certain prophet that came, uh, I was in a certain meeting and th- this prophet came and she said to me, there is, there is a quickly, quickly anointing that was coming, that is coming upon you. <laughs> when you look at it, uh, it's not proper grammar, is it? Quickly anointing. Uh, but I just liked the sound of it. <laughs> Good grammar or, or, <laughs> or right grammar. I just like the sound of it. <laughs> she said there is a quickly, quickly anointing that is coming upon you. Amen. Amen. And usually sometimes when we are, you know, it's not just for me. For many people, things happen faster than we expect. Yeah. Faster than we expect. It means that we are operating under open air. Amen. God can violate t- things that must take a year, they must take a few months. Things that can take a week, they must take days. Things that take days, they must just take hours. Because we have tapped into that mode of acceleration. Amen. God is the creator of time. So that's why in the book of Genesis, when he created, when he said, let there be light, he was creating time. So he is in control of time. Yeah. He says in the book of uh, is it First Timothy, 
He says, a day in the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day in the Lord. Do you see what God does with time? Amen? Amen. May we tap into that mode as the heavens are opened for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Acceleration to be our portion. Amen. It's painful to be waiting for a promise for too long. And you just wait and just wait. But when God moves and you have this victory, and then you have this victory, and then you have that victory, man, it is so exciting. Yes, it yes. is so exciting. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. Okay, number two. Open heavens bring with them divine shifts. Divine shifts. Divine shifts. Matthew 27, verse 51, it says, And behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. Amen? Divine shift. Yeah, there is a shift that is happening. Amen? Yeah. Roy mentioned that in the morning, that there is a shift that is happening. And definitely there is. Every part of the world, there is a problem that is happening. There is a problem. Sometimes it is the shift in terms of those that are, are, are coming into positions of authority. Yeah. Many places there are new people that are holding positions of authority now. And then problems that we've never seen in the past in different countries. Mm -hmm. So there is a shift that is taking place. And before God does something major, there is a shaking that must take place. Yeah. There is a shaking that must take place. Amen? Yeah. It says in the book of uh, Matthew, where we've just read, that the earthquake, there was a shaking before the church was birthed. Amen? The birthing of the church on the cross, it brought with it a quaking or a shaking. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I once said in some other place, that whenever God moves, he moves with a sound. Yes. God <laughs> may be silent and speak, but when he is moving, he moves with a sound. Yes. In Genesis 3 verse 8, the Bible says, they heard the sound of God moving in the garden. <laughs> they heard the sound of God moving. Then in Psalm 68, it says, when he led the children of Israel in the wilderness, the ground shook. The ground shook. Amen. So there are certain shakings that we may experience in life. God will be about to, will be preparing us for something big. Amen. Amen, guys. It says um, there are five ingredients to the anointing oil. Amen. And uh, I can't remember each and every one of them, but one of them is olive oil. It's olive oil. Olive oil, when they harvest it, they say that they go to the tree and they shake the tree. They shake the tree and the fruit drops to the ground. Then the remaining ripe fruit on the tree, they pick long poles and then they start beating each fruit, they beat with a pole, falls to the ground. And then after gathering the fruit that has fallen to the ground, they take them to an oil vat, an oil vat which is two big stones that would crush the fruit. Amen. The anointing comes through the shakings of our lives. The anointing comes through the beatings that we experience in life. And the anointing comes through the crashings that we experience. Amen. It comes through that. Amen? Amen. Okay, let me conclude with this one. Mm, there's a lot of things here. <laughs> okay, this one, the final one. Open heavens 
facilitate the manifestation of the similitude of God. Amen. The similitude of God. In Matthew 27, verse 53, it says, And out of the graves, out of the graves, after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. And came, sorry, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Amen. Amen. So now, when he had risen, and now he, he, he was appearing to, to, to different people. But it is amazing that at some point, one of his disciples, when he appeared to Thomas, couldn't recognize him. Couldn't recognize him. When God appears to us, or when Jesus appears to us, they appear to us through what is called maybe the similitude of Jesus or the similitude of, of God. Because God had told Abraham, uh, sorry, Moses that no one can see me and live. So now what he then does when he reveals himself to people, it is the similitude of God or the similitude of Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen? It's not really like it's God really who has appeared. Because there is a different facet of God. That's why in heaven, in the book of, according to the book of Revelation, they bow down and worship, and they look. They worship, <laughs> they look at, at God, and they say, holy. And when they are saying holy, they are in awe of what they are saying. Yeah. They are not just saying holy. They are in awe. They are amazed. So someone said that every time they lift up their eyes to, to see God, they see a different facet of God that they have not seen. Just imagine, years and years in heaven, you see something today, and you say, holy, you have not seen that side of God. And then you go down, and you look and say, holy, that is another side you have not seen. And you keep on doing that. That's how amazing God is. That's why when he appears to us, it is the similitude of God. He cannot reveal the, the, the fullness of himself to us. Because it can blow us. Yeah. We can be blown away by it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There's one part in the Bible that just amazes me. It says in John 20, John 12 verse 20, Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip who was at Bethsaida of Galilee. And asked him, saying, say, we wish <laughs> to see Jesus. Amen. These are not disciples. These are Greeks. They are not part of the, the gathering that usually gathers with around Jesus. They just come and say, say, we want to see Jesus. Amen. I want to see Jesus in, our, in my preaching. Amen? Yeah. I want to see Jesus when we worship God. Yeah. I want to see Jesus when we come into the house of God. Yeah. It should be our goal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you've got plans to open the heavens yeah. for us. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. We thank you that thank you. the death the resurrection and the ascension of Christ opened the, the heavens for us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we see a deeper level, Lord, even of the opening of the heavens. May the supernatural be our portion. May signs and wonders be our portion. May the unsaved receive Christ and turn unto the saving knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. May our town experience open heavens. Families that live in this town, may they worship the living God in the name of Jesus. May businesses that are situated in this town prosper even as the heavens above are open in Jesus' name. May our church prosper even as the heavens are open above us in Jesus' name we pray. May families in this church Prosper as the heavens open for them. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Were you blessed by that or what? Yeah, amen. Yeah? Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Tender. Excellent. Thank you, ma'am. Wonderful. And uh, anyway, I'm going to say something. I'm, I'm going to keep, I'm going to speak, I'll speak to you later. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now, for those out there who might have been tuned into this and not quite understanding what, what Tender I was saying, thinking, you know, I don't understand these things. Well, you see, the Holy Spirit has been in revealing these things to Tendai. And he then, in turn, tells us about it. You need the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus in your life to be able to understand. It's like when you was in school, you didn't know algebra until the teacher taught you algebra. You need the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can see and hear what God is saying. So at this time, particularly at this time, I mean, what's affecting, as Tendai said, what's affecting us these days are affecting everyone, non-Christians alike. You need Jesus in your life. You need to come to him today and ask him to come into your life. Now, am I saying that if you walk out in the rain as a Christian, you won't get wet? No, I'm not saying that. But we thank God for the rain when we do get wet. It's a different mindset when you have Jesus in your life to most things. We're still battling as human beings, but to battle on your own is very difficult these days. So I would say to you, get into your closet. Get into your quiet place. Get in, in your bedroom, on your knees, whatever it may take, and ask Jesus to come into your life. He is a gentleman. He will not barge his way through. He wants you to want him. And I'm telling you, it will make such a difference in your life. Amen. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, for those that are listening, that they would come into the kingdom, God's kingdom, where they will understand what God is saying to them, each and every one, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Lord, I just pray that as we leave this place today, we ponder over these things. And uh, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you will keep on revealing more and more of your heart to us. Not just through the teachers, but through ourselves, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.